the League of Legends World Championship happened last weekend. 13,000 people were jammed into the Staples Center here in Los Angeles. And it came down to South Korea and China. And it turns out that si South Korea put a beating on China. Okay, so lots of drums there. But I think the interesting part of this story is how esports has kind of taken over. It's become a sporting event. And they have announcers. They have literally tens of thousands of people watching at the same time um, at the Staples Center. And so it's kind of incredible that this is a, not only a growing uh, trend, but you know, people continue to, to love it. I think that at some point, I think it might even be a, more of an American pastime than football or baseball. Well, not football, but maybe baseball. Um, okay, so that's what's the interesting part of this story, right? Yeah. That it's now gotten so large. Everybody knew it was large, right? Everybody knew that it was this huge thing. And I remember, uh, I, I'm a little, I'm old school, okay? So I remember when Machinima at one point had become the largest network on YouTube, and Machinima basically does gaming, right? And I was like, Jesus, how could so many people watch other people play games? I was amazed by it. And then I realized that they were watching for the commentary as the guys are playing. They're basically the new version of talk show hosts. Mm -hmm. And these are in some ways the new version of competitors. I mean, athletes is too, too strong, obviously, right? But, but they're competing in a real way that's gotten a lot of people's attention. You fill up the Staples Center, that's kind of a watershed moment for, for this. And, and for a lot of the older folks, they're like, amazed by it. Of They're like, course. how could people watch other people playing a game? It, the flip side is we watch other people playing a game all the time. Games like yeah. basketball, football, etc. Yeah, and look, it goes beyond people of a certain demographic. I mean, I, I'm part of that young generation. I never really understood the, the video game culture. I'm being completely honest with you guys. But regardless of that, I mean, it is amazing to see how much video games have progressed in just a short period of time. I mean, you see this game, League of Legends, and it's really beautifully done. Like, graphically speaking, it's gorgeous. And, and I sound like a moron right now because I don't play the game and I have no expertise in it at all. But look, I can understand <laughs> what. It's <laughs> True. Anna is so like insecure about talking about gaming. Okay, because we don't I'm play not the a games. Gamer. I'm not so a gamer. what? So because, what? Because. I, okay, I, we talk about murderers on the show all the time. We're not murderers. It's okay. okay. It's all right. So okay, we don't know League of Legends. I don't know if it's better than the other games. Who cares, right? To me, the phenomenon is fascinating, right? Sure. Okay. So like, and and it's like the and, and as I'm reading about the story, it's like the World Cup. Like you got the. North American teams, the NA teams, please. They're such underdogs, they have no chance against the Asian teams. Anyway, this is what I mean about it looking beautiful. I don't know what's going on. It kind of hurts my head. No, no, I love this. You know why? I don't understand what's happening either. But it sounds just like watching a, a, a football game. Like, oh my God, there goes Amendola around the corner and then Brady hits him with a pass. Oh, wow. He could go all the way. So right? I can totally imagine this being broadcast on television. I think I think of that course. it's going to go in that direction, and and that you know s a certain network is going to buy the rights to broadcast it. They're going to make a tremendous amount of money off of it. I mean, if networks are really concerned about capturing a younger demographic, this is the exact way to do it. And the reason, another reason I love the story is like if my dad sees this, he would lose his mind, right? Yeah. And whereas younger people think like, of course, what's the big deal, right? Like it, once we thought about messing around with my dad, you know, I already gave him one heart attack when I uh, said, "Oh, I'm not going to be a lawyer anymore. I'm going to be a, a talk show host." And then I thought, like, and then the, it started succeeding a little bit, and he's got a little bit of a sigh of relief. And then I was thinking of messing around with him and saying, "Hey, oh, dad, you know what? Enough with the talk show stuff. I decided I'm going to be a professional gamer." He would be like, oh, 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 he did, oh he, he did, please stop. He wouldn't okay. be the only one who got a heart attack from that news. <laughs> okay, so the what, funny thing is that it's become so professionalized that there are now amateur leagues. Like, it was funny when there was professionals to begin with. Now they're so professional that they're like, oh, well, uh, you know, <laughs> if you amateurs want to try a league of your own. <laughs> no, and the guys in the amateur league, I'm sure, are Awesome. No, let's right? go to the video where you see the announcers doing analysis of the game. It's incredible. Just it all comes down to this. This is amazing. This One is amazing. Final best of five series between SK Telecom T1 and Royal Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! 
on the Korean hype train, SK Telecom G1 for the championship, hands down. I feel like his landing is a 10 out of 10. He's never lost land so far this entire tournament, and all he does is counterpick his opponent and smash land, and he's always useful throughout the game. They play the map, and they play objectives better than anyone else. They will rotate someone out of a lane and just five-man dive a turret. And you might get their top turret, but they'll get kills in the, on your turret, they'll kill the turret itself, and they'll time that push around blue buff or dragon so they get more than they lost in all these pushes. Really vision-centric, really mobility-based, almost a second support on the map. Uh, it's what basically snowballs SKT's lead. There's something about their play that forces other teams to react to their decisions, and with their team compositions that are all about that 5v5, it's really, really powerful. All right, that's awesome. Obviously, they're to some degree trying to look like ESPN, and they totally look like it, right? Mm -hmm. And then the then analysis on the blue dragon, though, that was really good. I think it was blue bluff or something <laughs> and dragon. So, but then that's what makes it kind of comical. But if you don't know football, it might also sound comical, right? But it's like, oh, the t twist and turn he did on that dragon was amazing. <laughs> You're like, ooh, okay, I don't know. But, uh, but overall, uh, I, I love any kind of competition. You got all these countries uh, competing. China was a heavy favorite, and the South Koreans in a dramatic, stunning upset win 3-0. And then, uh, of course, the nicknames on the players are awesome. The South Korean team uh, had these nicknames, Impact, Piglet, Faker, uh, Benji, and my favorite, Pooh Mandu. <laughs> Not sure I would have gone in that direction in terms of a nickname. Uh, they won the Summoner's Cup, and by the way, a $1 million grand prize. Mm. And one final twist on this story, uh, they're now debating whether the Asians are simply genetically better at video games. Yes. Oh, I'm I'm come on, come on, please. That's so stupid. That's so unbelievably stupid. Of course they're not. And then the other <laughs> camp is like, well, it might be because of the way they train and they, you know, spend more time. Like, of course that's what it is. Of course. No, how are you? Like, oh, man, his thumbs and the coordination he has. Well, you can't compete, you know, because in the old days in China, when they were, you know, picking rice or whatever, the thumbs would, and then that's why they're genetically better at it. Hey, can we can we keep it real? Uh -huh. Okay, come on, let, okay, let's say it. Okay, do I do I have to say it? Do you say it? Yeah, you <laughs> say, you, it. You, you say, say it. it. I'd like to uh, avoid the hate. Okay, you, well, why why are you so sure it's gonna be hate? <clears throat> anyway, um, okay, people criticize people that watch. Like you said, it's compared to the ESPN, maybe college game day, where there's a bunch of old jocks sitting there talking about football, and they'll go, oh, you stupid jocks. All you want to do is see a bunch of guys run to each other and go, ooh, ooh, and pump their chest, and oh, I tackled you. This is so homoerotic. They say all these things about sports, athletes, and fans, right? Fine, whatever. It doesn't stop us from watching football. So put it this way. That game looks lame, and I don't get a million people sitting in one space to watch other people play this video game, which I think maybe some are genetically disposed to do better because maybe you need a steady hand. Like, these games are really complicated now, right? Maybe you need a steady hand to move the controller slightly to do a slight move because it gets very specific. I get that. But the problem that comes is there's such a, a, such a butt-hurt reaction when someone says, I don't like that. That's lame. We can say that. Why not? You know what? It's lame. It's fucking lame. It looks like Zelda 2013. <laughs> Let's just forget. I mean, come on. John's right now spinning in his chair. But that looks like Zelda from 1984. That's all. That's, it, it, I don't see anything new about that. We did that shit when we were seven. It's fine. Okay. Damn. <laughs> all right. L let the hate pour on to J.R. Jackson. <laughs> I I'm amused by the idea of a Pac-Man World Cup tournament. Oh, you see the At way that he I'd moved? At least understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, this is what I'm all about. But it, all JR is saying is that he doesn't like that game. So yeah, and I'm saying, and bottom line, it doesn't mean you shouldn't play or how dare you sit in your room and practice for a year to make sure you're that good at it. I mean, no, because guys, after, you know, high school football guys, they leave school every day and go and run into each other and they get better at football, right? You can simplify all these things, but it's practice. That's all there is to it, but to each his own thing. But don't get mad when somebody says, uh, it's kind of stupid. It's just their opinion. It's uh, like yeah. your opinion, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to quote uh, the dude. Uh, last couple of things. It's, I refuse to, to even entertain the idea that it's, not, that it's genetic. It is not genetic. It is not genetic. That's ridiculous. Okay. Number two, I know because I used to play rugby. So whenever you're in a community where that is not necessarily mainstream, like if anybody dissed on rugby, all the rugby players would be so mad. Like, oh, what the fuck, man? Oh, it's your, your rugby's awesome. Oh, it's cooler than football. Uh -huh. I know, dude. Just calm down. We're smaller than they are. Just, okay. Just, just don't, you don't need to panic, right? And, 
And then second of all, uh, let me just pour on just a tiny bit of haterade, oh, even though I love the concept overall. I don't play it, but I think it's cool that it's gotten this big, mm. right? Uh, is that, yeah, don't call them real athletes. They're real competitors. They're not athletes. That's, that's when I'll get Ben Mankiewicz on you. This is not an athlete. Mm. Okay. Really? You need some muscular thumbs to play that game, Huger. Yeah, I know. They, yeah. They're going to give it the dexterity, eye-hand coordination. Spare me. Spare me. Now I'll actually get more hate than JR for saying that. Okay.